Welcome to SFGMC TV. My name's Mitch Galley. I am the Associate Artistic Director for the course. And today we are joined by a fairly new friend of the chorus, uh, new composer, Julian Hornick. How are you doing, Julian? Hello. I'm, uh, you know, hanging in there on the opposite coast. Yeah, where are you calling us from today? I'm in New York City. You know, the, the place that apparently has fallen to, to bits and pieces. So, because <laughs> we don't know, well, we're covered in fire smoke right now with all the That's fire true. Uh, but tell us, what is New York like right now? Because we don't know. It's honestly, I, so I, I came back from San Francisco to New York about a month ago. And I have to say, it's pretty idyllic, all things considered. It's, it's actually kind of absurd. I was in Central Park a couple days ago, and there was like a woman in the middle of the park with like an electric keyboard giving a voice lesson to two little girls who are like belting Hamilton at the top of their lungs and like like just all these little kids in masks playing soccer. Like, it, like I mean, everyone's masked, so there's that sort of like semi-apocalyptic element. But like life is kind of moving on here in a way that's sort of beautiful and surprising. And you'd never guess, uh, given the RNC's... Uh, depiction last week oh, that's, that's a whole <laughs> other conversation yes yeah was, yeah so for the the people that don't know um we had a commission that you wrote for us that was supposed to premiere in march two weeks after shelter in place happened so yeah, perfect timing i know right <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're still working on ways that we can still get this released and we have a whole group of other co-commissioning courses who are going to be performing over the next few years as well. Um, but can you tell us, let's start back at the beginning, actually, a very good place to start. Uh, exactly. How did you first get introduced to the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus? Yeah, I mean, so I grew up in Palo Alto, California. So just like 45, I guess people in the Bay Area don't need to hear this, but I was like 45 minutes like south of San Francisco. But uh, for anyone on this coast, that's where it is. Um, uh, anyways, and so I grew up like fully aware that this chorus was around and amazing. And as like a sort of spectacularly gay little kid, I think my parents were <laughs> very quick to point out anything that was like unabashedly gay anywhere. So I'm sure they exposed me at some point very early on. Like this chorus, they're all gay, like <laughs> subtext like you. Um, but uh, so anyway, so that that was probably the earliest exposure, just being in the Bay Area and aware. But then in high school, um, the chorus did the I Am Harvey Milk uh, commission from Andrew Lippa. And um, and they had this uh, basically this sort of call for submissions to the community about sort of any kind of art piece, be it song or dance or anything that uh, about what Harvey meant to you. And so I, I think I was a sophomore in high school and I wrote this song called Altoona, Pennsylvania um, about a phone call that Harvey received from a young kid in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania, about what Harvey meant to him back then and then sort of glommed onto that experience as my own uh, and then was insanely lucky and the chorus ended up performing the song with me uh, my junior year of high school and then again my senior year and it was sort of this bizarre like a like insane spectacular way to get to meet Laura Benanti but um <laughs> but but even Not better <laughs> right but it was also kind of like I it was my kind of last hurrah living in the Bay Area before moving back east for college and then to live here to work and so it's sort of in my mind it's like the sort of exclamation mark at the end of my youth was being on stage at the chorus singing this song. So, uh, so that, that's, that was my exposure to the chorus initially. And then you went off to Yale for college yes. and did not study composition. What did you study? I was technically an American studies major, uh, which really just meant that I kind of took whatever and shoveled it all under the umbrella of American studies and was like, yeah, it's all cultural history. But uh, so I went, yeah, not technically a composition major, although uh, like the probably the well, the two single most important classes I took in college. One was an LGBT U.S. history course taught by this guy, George Chauncey, who's this unbelievable professor and just like 
brilliant, brilliant, brilliant human being. And the other one was my musical theater composition seminar taught by Janine Tesori, who wrote Fun Home and Thoroughly Modern Millie and Carolina Change and is just like a hero of heroes. So, so I sort of, <laughs> that was my version of American studies. <laughs> and you had a minor as well. Correct. Well, I sort of fake minor. I, I didn't technically, I mean, I could do the, like the sort of like douchey, like Yale doesn't actually do minors. We do double majors, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but my, I mean, I, my only like major major was American studies, but I basically the number of courses I took in LGBT us history and composition, either would have probably qualified as a technical minor. Right. Well, but that also really lends to, what ended up happening once you graduated and got this offer from the chorus to then yeah. create this commission at Queer Z. Uh, so when you got the call, um, what was your initial thought of like what you wanted to create this work to be? Totally. I mean, well, my first thought was like, oh my God, this is a dream project. I mean, as, I mean, I can say like, as it was described to me basically was, hey, it's us, the gay men's chorus. And, <laughs> and we want to make a piece basically about the contemporary queer youth experience. And that was sort of just like blank canvas, go for it. And I was like, oh my God, because basically I'd spent sort of apropos of nothing, the last sort of three months leading up to that call, just sort of absorbing all of this queer lit stuff that I kind of was <laughs> frankly sort of jealous I didn't have as a young adult myself. So I like dove into the Love, Simon stuff and uh cameron post and all of these all of these incredible novels and so i was very much entrenched in this contemporary queer literature world for young adults and so it was sort of this amazing opportunity to be like oh now i get to try to contribute to that canon in some way <laughs> and so we went through a lot of iterations um and we ended up settling pretty uniquely on two versions of the show one of which yeah. has three additional bonus pieces, um, which is allowing the co-commissioning courses to either do it as a one act show or as a full concert with two separate acts. Yes, yeah, we've got the deluxe album and then just like the highlights. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and so we were gonna be doing the highlights version in one act. Um, and we had a really special plan to collaborate with the choir from your high school in Palo Alto um, on a few of the pieces. One of the pieces uh, you actually wrote is one of the last submissions and it was not even, we weren't even thinking of this aspect. So can you tell us first what the piece was about? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, sort of even before that, the first thing, cause you've reminded me that one of my favorite things about this whole project was that I was going to get to collaborate with my old choir teacher, Mr. Nahar and with the Pali choir like that, that was, that was such a dream and so insane. And I hope to get to do stuff with them again soon. But, uh, but anyways, but yeah, so second period, basically sort of in the midst of a year ago of just sort of vomiting up as much material as possible in as short a time as possible to build the show out of, I kind of just had this moment of reckoning where I was like, you know, it feels disingenuous to talk about the contemporary anything youth experience right now without addressing gun violence because unfortunately it is so inextricable from from that experience i mean even i i'm like right on the cusp of gen z and millennial so i like depending on the day i'm like the show's about me the show's not about me but uh <laughs> but e i mean even when i was in middle school and high school like i remember code red drills and like learning how to barricade a door and all these things that are just completely insane and of course it's only gotten more insane as time has gone on and, and so that, that was really, it was just as simple as that, where just sort of sitting there after a few weeks of writing and being like, I think even just for myself, I need to explore this aspect of this in order to feel like I'm actually doing due diligence. And um, so that was sort of where the song came from. And it is a very eerie song in the sense that yeah. it <laughs> intentionally wrote it to be so mundane and just like, matter of fact of okay it's time to do this or i wear my running shoes to school every day because i don't know what to expect um right. it's, it's haunting um so we were thrilled when you came to us with that idea one of the other pieces that is actually this week that we're going to be showing in addition to this behind the curtain is a piece that you wrote called 75 cents 
um, and you sing a solo guitar and you and you as well dubbed as harmony uh, but yeah tell the us chorus more of me yeah <laughs> five cents and how that comes into the whole picture of the lgbtq generation z youth experience totally yeah, i mean it's another one actually not unrelated to the origin point for second period where it just felt like i mean actually the song is about uh queer homelessness and particularly queer youth homelessness. And it just was one of those things where if you were gonna write a show about the contemporary Greek experience, you had to address it because, I mean, I, I believe this statistic is something like 40% of homeless youth are LGBTQ identifying as opposed to like the 7% of youth that they actually represent overall. So it's this staggering, horrifying statistic. And, um, and so yeah, so that was that it was it was one of those songs where from the get go I was like, there, if if we're going for this sort of holistic approach, one of these songs has to address this, and um, and it was actually the very first song I wrote. I don't know if you remember this. There's the very first song I wrote for the commission. Uh, I think partially just because it was the one that felt clearest to me that it had to had to happen, and so and I and I wrote it on the piano even though I now mostly play it on guitar because it feel i mean it's so i got lost in my head thinking about an orchestration thing but um <laughs> but uh i mean uh, without giving too much away it's a song about this homeless kid who rides the bus at night just to have a basically a, a space in which to try to get some sleep uh and so the the song really as soon as i had that image it was born entirely out of that sense of kind of jolting forward motion where you think you're getting somewhere but you're actually just on this circuitous loop and you're not getting anywhere and just this kind of sense of just sort of dread and again a little bit of the mundanity uh <laughs> I, I promise the show has some happy stuff uh, <laughs> but uh there are some funny moments too yeah exactly <laughs> but uh but yeah so that, that was sort of the origin point of the song and uh and i, I guess another important thing to say is i one of the one of the ways I approached it was by doing as much much research as possible. And one of the really helpful resources on that was the Ali Forney Center in New York, and just all the resources they have online. And sort of reading their data and their story really informed that song. And so one of the things too, we wrote uh, or you came up with a song that was an ode to Kate McKinnon. Yes. <laughs> And little did we know right after you said that um, there was the award ceremony where she officially came out publicly, um, which everyone kind of already knew. But we were like, this could not be more perfect as showing these LGBTQ celebrities who are role models for peers. Um, looking ahead now to keep this piece relevant, we almost should add, I feel like, a new movement to talk about virtual learning and I mean, that could right. be a show in itself to talk yeah, about. Yeah, the, the exciting <laughs> Zoom edition. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, mean, I, mean, it, 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 I mean, it's one of those weird things where it's like, we're literally living through a paradigm shift. So I actually, frankly, don't know how you do anything that was written before this moment as it was without being like, that is a period piece of exactly. the pre this moment. It, oh my God, yeah, that, that's a whole can of worms you can't even open. <laughs> Uh, but as you said, there are some more lighthearted, fun pieces. And yes. one of the other pieces that we're releasing this week is a new virtual course piece on extracurricular, um, extracurricular activities. So can you tell us a little bit more about what we'll hear in the song and also what inspired that song? Totally. I mean, the so sort of the like pulling back the curtain on the process i can say like this song, sometimes it's like oh divine inspiration this song i know exactly what it'll be and this is why i have to write it this one very clearly was like i've written a very depressing show and we all agree it needs something funny in it <laughs> and that's that was really the motivation by right? like, oh okay like <laughs> we need people to not just be fully depressed through the whole thing so uh so that was the initial point and then so i was looking i mean trying to write a comedy song to be funny is just sort of like you're dead on arrival. It's, it's the hardest thing. And so I spent a really long time trying to figure out what my bent would be for this kind of moment of relief. And then it kind of in thinking about my own time in middle school and high school was all I could think about was the like 
like the that's so gay epithet that I think has sort of, I, it, it persists, but I I think slightly less pervasively. Um, but but kind of trying to turn that on its head and basically have this kid uh, who is trying to trying to figure out both who he is and also what he wants to do and um, and keeps getting sort of choked up by thinking that anything he chooses to do is going to be perceived in a way that he doesn't want to be perceived. And then by the end, he gets so wrapped up in this that it's like, I mean, I, again, this one, I don't want to give away the punchline because otherwise there's no joke, but See that's it. sort of a really, a really roundabout way of trying to set up this song, but I cannot wait to hear it actually sung by the chorus. Cause I haven't heard any of this sung by the chorus yet. I, you <laughs> so are going to be crazy. You plane ticket the week to be here. And then, that was actually, I think, the week that literally everything. Yes. Down. What is your hope for audiences, particularly the younger audiences, the Generation Z youth that see this? What messages do you want them to be walking away with after seeing this work? Ooh, that's definitely one that you'd think I'd be like ready to answer. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm the sort of broadest possible answer is I really it's just about representation and trying to trying to hold up some kind of mirror in some way just because I know like even now as an adult who really feels lucky to have grown up in a time where there's just this unbelievable wealth of queer representation that any any time something like really locks in it's still it's just kind of like a jolt of like oh wow and so any any chance to give that to any young person is really kind of the reason I want to do this thing at all ever, but to have it be so specifically tuned to that goal for this project is just thrilling. And I hope that at some point kids get to actually see it. I mean, one thing we talked about was doing basically bringing in as many high schools as possible to see the show. And that, you know, that, I mean, that's, Again, like, like in lieu of like trying to imbue the show with any kind of message specifically to like implant in the minds of kids, really what I just want is for them to see it and kind of locate themselves in some aspect of it, because that's, that's the kind of magical thing about any of this. Right. And so, and of course, like the, with the caveat of like understanding that I am one human being and could only, could only approach it with even with as much research and interviewing as we did with my own perspective and hoping that they would in that perspective find themselves, but then also sort of have the like gumption and self-awareness to then tell their own story in whatever they do. Yep. And that you do your, their story justice for sure. I mean, that's exactly, that's a big moment to hold up and it, it is a lot of responsibility. So one of the things that I know when our singers were rehearsing it, though, they loved because, I mean, our singers cross many generations and there were certain storylines that everyone could still relate to, whether it was like choosing the extracurricular activity and being nervous of it being perceived as gay. Uh, another one that is more relevant to right now, but it's still an experience no matter how old you are, was the song Ellipses and the anxiety that comes with the three dots when you're texting somebody and like, what are they gonna text back? Um, and so yeah. especially when it's a love interest that you have a crush on someone and like that anxiety of what are they about to say back to me? Uh, so that was great, but also the way that you do open the eyes of older generations that are not in uh, the Generation Z of like you did with a gun control piece. I mean, that's not something that a lot of us experienced when we were in school. So really grateful for that. And I'm excited for this to eventually be out in the world whenever that may be. Um, but for the time being, for this back to school special week, they'll get a preview of two of the songs, ex Extracurricular and 75 Cents. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us, to let us know what's going on and to give us a little more insight on At Queer Z, this new commission that the chorus is going to be releasing in a little bit, hopefully. Um, Hope you stay safe in New York. We'll see you, you at And you know, polls. thank you for giving me the platform to do this. I mean, really, the, it's a dream commission. So thank you. <laughs> you have a very bright future ahead of you too. So we're, we're glad to get a hold of you before you come. <laughs> well, thank awesome. you and have a wonderful day. And we uh, will hope to hear from you sometime soon.
Yes, thank you. And stay safe in the Bay. Have a great one, everyone.